Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the AMP page. I'm going to pick up right where I left off last time uh, with our bass sound. Let me go over the straightforward parameters first and then we'll talk a little bit more about the AMP envelope. So down here in the lower right hand corner we have our overall volume for the track. We have pan left and right. Panning is a great modulation source for LFOs. I strongly recommend checking it out. We have our reverb and delay sends. Now I talked about this in one of the first videos on sound architecture, that these two do not actually apply reverb. They tell how much signal is going to be sent to the reverb and delay. If I go to my reverb page, if I turn my reverb all the way down, on the amp page, it doesn't really matter how much reverb you're putting on. So it's just something to keep in mind that unless this is turned up a little bit, this won't matter. So just play around with that. Same thing with delay. This tells how much of a signal you're going to be sending. And then over here is where you actually control the different parameters of the delay like feedback if your feedback is way up that could get muddy really quickly uh, so even if your feedback is way up and your amp is down really low it's still going to get muddy so if you're struggling with that and you're just kind of wondering why you keep turning down your delay, it's because this sends a signal to the delay and here is where you control the actual delay by pressing function and filter. And lastly, in the upper right hand corner, we have overdrive, which adds gain to your signal, which can kind of increase the volume, but it also gives it a bit of distortion. So those are all pretty straightforward. The AMP envelope can be very confusing for beginners, so I want to cover it as best I can. I talked a lot about envelopes in the last video on the filter, but there are two envelopes, one for the filter, one for the amp. So I'm going to go over the amp envelope and I'm also going to explain how the amp envelope and the filter envelope interact together. Just like the filter envelope, on the amp envelope you have an attack time, you have a hold time, which is a little bit different than the filter envelope and you have a decay time. That's it, just three controls. On the filter envelope, we actually had four. We had the sustain level, release, decay time, and attack time. An a ADSR envelope on the filter, and the amp is just attack, hold, decay. So the attack time is probably the easiest to wrap your brain around. That's how quickly the sound comes on. So right now it's at zero. So the second I push the button, you hear a sound. If I turn it up a little bit, it's going to slowly fade in. And if I turn it up a lot, it fades in slowly. Now this is kind of interesting because the filter time has a very short attack and a decay time, a, a longer decay. So what you're actually hearing is the sound fading in as the filter is closing off the upper harmonics. If we turned up the sustain knob, so it's kind of interesting that those two are passing by each other. But that's the attack. 
Decay is also fairly easy to understand, and that's once we release the node, how long the sound will carry on as it slowly fades out. Watch as I release the button, you'll still hear some sound coming through. See, it's still going, and now it's gone. If I turn it even longer, you can still hear it. And you could hear it even more if the filter sustain level was up. Or if the filter release time is gone. But if I turn my amp decay time all the way down, the second I release the button, it's going to cut it off. And it doesn't even matter what the filter is doing. The sound gets cut off by the amp. So that's one thing to consider with these two and how they interact is that the amp is how much sound is going on and the filter colors the sound. So if your amp cuts off the sound, it doesn't matter what the filter is doing. The amp kind of overrides everything. All right, let's talk about the hold time in the middle because this is fairly unique to the Digitac. There's a little note there and you can see it says hold time equals node. So at hold time, when it equals the note, it means that the note will ring out until the trigger length stops or the source material length stops. In this example, our source oh. material is super short. As I explained in the last video, it's just, it would be a, just a click if it wasn't looping. So the amp is making it go on and on. And so that's the amp determines the amount of sound. With no sequence playing, the length of the note is just how long I'm holding it. Now, if I were, I'm going to turn down the decay time so we can really tell. It stops when I let go. If we turn it lower than a note, then that means that the note will ring out for whatever the amount of time is displayed. So if I set it for super short, it doesn't matter how long I hold down the note it's only going to play to 34. So that means if I hold it down, it will stop at 34. If I press it and lift it up before 34, it's still going to ring out the same amount, 34. It doesn't matter. And if you increase this, same amount of time. That might make sense for something like a kick drum hit. It's not something that you want to really ring out or change in any way because it's a, it's a one-shot hit. So you might program in something like this. Now when a sequence is playing, the note length is determined by the trig length, which is right here. Notice how I have the sequence going and when the length is short, it's super short. And if you set it to one, it actually says one sixteenth, so that's one sixteenth note, or one step in the sequence. If we set it to two, it's an eighth note. So basically the length is how many steps in the sequence. So if I step, set it to six, it's going to go from one all the way to six. And then it cuts off. I set it to eight. Oh. 
So that's the nuts and bolts of the AMP page. You also got a little bit of the trig page. In the next video, I'm gonna dive into all those settings and make sure it's just 100% clear. And then I'm gonna do a whole video on trig conditions and different ways you can mix up your track. So I hope you like this video. Once again, let's thank Perfect Circuit for making this video series possible. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.